All right, let's get started um, on lesson three. I suppose everyone has read through um, the online material, so at this point, you are ready to um, start the example. Hopefully, you have appreciated the um, importance of surface complexation and how common they occur and what are the applications as well as um, what governing, what governs the surface complexation on clays and um, different type of material. So in this video, we are going to go through this example 3.1, which um, essentially is, is about setting up a batch reactor for chromium sorption on elite. And we know chromium is a very common contaminant. It can occur in, in terms of the both natural occurrence, um, the processes in natural system that actually will generate chromium. Um, it's also widely used in industry for different type of applications. So um, chromium can be um, a tremendous risk to both human and ecosystem health. So clay in natural system usually have the capacity to absorb um, chromium. So what we are going through here in this example, I'm giving you table four, which is the initial conditions for the system. And essentially, we are really kind of looking at a, a batch reactor at 25 degrees C. And uh, let's say you have a beaker. 250 milliliter, that's the volume. And essentially we're adding, okay, so you have this amount of uh, water. This beaker is filled with um, 250 um, milliliter water. And then you imagine in that beaker you have some amount of um, elite grains. And I put here elite volume fraction is point 0 0.003, which is 0.3% of the total volume. You can actually calculate what it is because we have a, a 250 milliliter as a total volume. And you are also given this Eli specific surface area, which is 15.36 um, meters square per gram. Now, Eli is a very common clay material. Um, some other common clay material like smectite, um, chloride, there are various types of clay minerals. Clay tend to be very complex in terms of both um, its uh, chemical compositions are all kinds of uh, different type of clay minerals. So it, we pick Eli as a representative one essentially. Now, so imagine you have all these and then in the water you are putting in a pH 8.0 and uh, this chromium, what I'm putting here as this concentration um, is before the speciation. So it's really, um, it's a total concentration chromium-6. Um, and then you have sodium, chloride, um, potassium in the background. Okay, so these are what's happened, what's in the um, solution. And then in the second half of the table, I'm telling you that there's this surface, essentially the surface site, SiOH, right? And this surface site can go through four different surface reactions. One is complexity with H plus to become this um, SiOH2 plus. Um, and then it's log K it's apparent equilibrium constant in the, it's listed right in the right, right hand side. Anyway, you have these four different reactions um, for the surface reaction part. But imagine you would also have all kinds of aqueous complexation reaction happening at the same time. You are not going to just have these surface reactions, right? So um, keep that in mind. So what I'm asking, we, we, we went through this table four. And what I'm asking here is that, um, first of all, at the pH of 8.0, I'm asking you to calculate the concentration of all the different surface complexes on the surface sides. 
and what is the pH value after system reaches equilibrium. And these are all equilibrium reactions, so um, you will get the direct number after these uh, running the simulation. And if you have pH, initial pH is 4.0, you do the same thing, and how much different do you see? So essentially, it's really trying to look at, compa by comparing question 1 and question 2, you're looking at how much different does pH make in terms of how much chromium sob on the surface. OK, so let's go through, um, let's go through this. Uh, let me uh, open up. There's two things that you actually will need to set up. I talked briefly in the online material text. Um, one is the database. In order to set up the reactions, you will need the surface reaction. You will need to go through um, the database. And what, so in the database, let's see, we start f from the beginning. And I, you know before that from previous lessons, you have all the different blocks. Um, we have touched through primary species block, secondary species block, we, um, and then mineral reaction kinetics in the previous lessons. Here, let's go through the surface complexation. So there's a, there's a block after all, listing all the minerals. There's a um, surface complexation block. So let's do Control F to search for surface complexation, and it directly come to me with a begin surface complexation session. So I, I already what I do different is this lecture a little bit different from previous previous one. I tend to start from beginning and we go kind of one by one step. Here I'm already giving putting in these reactions because um, that will save us a little bit of time. I don't want the video to be too long because at some, at some point it gets boring. Okay, so um, in this, so what you will need to do in the beginning of the conversation part, you will be putting in all the different reactions listed in table. See, you have four reactions, so you will need this. Okay, anyway, so you would need um, four different surface reactions included here. Now, the way I, I, I wrote it is using the, um, the products, the ZOP species. So if you observe, for example, the first one here, it's SiOH2+. It's, it's actually the um, this one, SiOH2 plus. Whether you use this like three line equal or you use this larger sign, it doesn't really matter because the code will read in the um, essentially the, the text file. And as long as you have consistent representation in the input file and in the database, it can recognize it. it doesn't matter if you use this larger than or if you use this um, triple equal sign. Um, but the, the problem will come if you are not consistent between an input file and the database. So anyway, here in the input file, I write this way. So essentially, you can see it's this species similar to the equal complexation, right? So you have this species and equals to 1.0H plus plus 1.0, um, this SiOH species. Now, it's a it's opposite way of writing, right, in, as in this table. And this K, apparent K, is written in terms of the reaction in this form. So when we do this form, so, so, so it needs to be negative now, so it's minus 0 0.95. Again, we are looking at 25 degrees C. This uh, the whole format is very similar. It's essentially the same as what you see before for the aqueous convexation. So you can think about surface convexation is really s almost like aqueous convexation, ex except that you are having a reaction with species on the surface. And so the, all these different reactions are written similarly. So this, so this first item is for the first reaction. And then the second one, you have SiO minus 
as a uh, on the surface, and uh, this is equal to essentially minus one from this SiOH, right? So this is another reaction. Now again, in the table you have minus six point five nine, and it's because the reaction is in the opposite direction. So this need to be six point five nine, and all these other five hundred zero as I mentioned, these are for you could even consider at different temperatures and you can really ignore them but you do need to have eight items to represent the eight temperature points um, and similarly you have SiO, sodium and SiOH and each chromium this species so as long as you pay attention to the sign of the log k values uh, be consistent with how this is um, these terms in term reaction are written is in the opposite way of that is listed in the table. You should be fine. All right. So this for the for the surface convection block in the database, and then the second item in the database for surface convection is giving the charge for each of these surface complexes. The, what is the charge of? Um, each of these species. So, for example, SiOH is zero. SiOH two plus is one point zero, minus is minus one point zero, and you have the, all these other species. So your list is there. So essentially, two items in the database block. Okay, and then in the um, uh, input file block, let's look. See. Let's look at this. Again, I already put everything in, but we we'll walk through, and you kind of need to know. Um, so all these, all these ones we talked about before, these are kind of a competition, wrong time, whatever it needs. Um, and then the discretization is for essentially total volume. So we have 250 milliliter, and putting centimeters as um, as units, this is essentially okay. We only input two hundred fifty um, for X zone as one cell. But essentially, you the, the default is the so Y zones and Z zones is one. So it's like one grid block in each in each direction. So giving you a, a well mixed one grid block essentially. Um, if you want to specifically put in Y zones one one and then Z zones one, that's fine too. You can look up the discretization in the crunch menu. Um, and then you have, you do need to put in elite. The reason is that because um, in crunch for all the surface sites, you need to specify which mineral it is on. So here, this SiOH site is on elite. So you have to have elite there. So in the mineral, you have you you would need to put elite as a mineral. You for systems that you have, for example, you have mineral distribution precipitation, and you have also have surface convection. So you might have multiple mineral minerals there, but um, and the and you might have multiple minerals that have surface convection um, sites, and you can put more than um, these if. For when you have more complex, uh, more complex systems, so um, this is for surface convection, and then we go to the condition. Now, in the condition, okay, we set up the initial, right? So, okay, this unit should be really more per liter. I think in the table we, I put more per liter. Anyway, okay, so this is more per liter. Temperature twenty five. Um, And then you have pH eight point zero, chromium, sodium, chloride, potassium. They are all listed in the um, table four in the online material. Now I do have a few more species than a few more primary species than what you have in what I have in the table. And the reason why do I need to do that? The reason is that we have elite, 
and uh, let's go so as long as you have it let's go so what is the elite inter mineral dissolution reaction we don't really put mineral dissolution reaction but as long as you put elite then you need all the building block in the aqueous phase essentially so let's search in the database how does elite uh, what is the composition of it like, in terms of the um, different uh, chemical species? So I do F for elite. All right, so you have elite. Okay, look at here. So this elite, you will be, you mentioned you will be writing elite as a solid phase, dissolving out. Okay, actually plus H plus, 8H plus, and then dissolving out to become 0.25 magnesium, 0.6 potassium, 2.3 aluminum, 3.5 silica, and water. And then the rest of these are the eight equilibrium constants in different temperature. And then you have the uh, molecular weight or whatever. And in any in any case, you can see that in the elite block, elite is comp is composed of these different cations. So although in the table I only give you, let's see, chromium, uh, sodium, chloride, and other species, because elite the mineral contains magnesium, silica, aluminum. Um, as additional species, so we do need to put in the input file for this species as part of the primary species. So that's what you actually would do. So these species are already given essentially, right, in the table. And these species are additional because of the inclusion of elite as a mineral, and you need all the building blocks for elite. Otherwise, the code is not going to recognize it. So all these species are, for example, um, pH, chromium, sodium, chloride, according to the concentrations that are given to you in the table, and then SiO2, aluminum, magnesium. Let's assume that, uh, for example, inner dissolution will be very slow. Let's say you have this. You are look. You are doing absorption experiment. You are usually you are, you want to look at how much this chromium absorbs on the solid phase. Usually you do it in a very short, in within a very short period of time, and elite dissolution is 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 relatively slow, so it won't dissolve out, out much in the solution. So let's imagine your solution doesn't have much of this species. I could put zero, but usually I tend to, I prefer to put this small number instead of zero. A lot of time computers have s some uh, problem with zero, so let's not try to avoid zero if you can. Okay, so these are the primary species. And then you have the site name. This is the name of site that you put in the database. Now, as I mentioned, if you use this three line equal sign in here, then you, when you put in database, you also need to put three line equal sign. Okay, so here, um, one point, this is a site density, which is in units more per meter square. It's 1.0 times 10 to minus 6, which is given in the table. And then you have this elite 0 0.003 with a specific surface area of 15.36 meters square per gram. Okay, so that's a condition block. You, so you not only should put in all the species that are given to you in the table, but also the species that are part of the building block of the elite, the minerals that uh, the surface side is on. And then actually you put this probably should be in earlier, um, but anyway, um, the order doesn't really matter in the input file. But just look at the second species. Um, you have these second, I put these second species, but some of them may not be important. We can run it and go through it in the um, output file. So once you have this, let's look at um, this folder that we are going to run the simulation for this example 3.1. So I click on this, 
run I get uh, CR example 3.1 dot in all right so it went through it give up you speed all the output file but the key ones that you'll be looking at would be um, so CR example output file Let's see why is it okay this one it may be this one okay so let's look through this example Again, so at the early part of this, it'll be walking through your input file and database, look for everything, for example, number of components, number of second species, number of kinetic minerals, and go through all the k-value uh, k matrix, essentially. These are all right. And if you want, sometimes when you debug, for example, if something went wrong and you don't know what, what's wrong with it, it's worthwhile to look through the early part of this. For example, you might be not putting the right log k values and leads to a problem when you do the calculation. Okay, so again, these are all the condition input, condition initial. We could, okay, this chart, we didn't really put a charge balance here, but so this is, a, right now is a total charge of negative, so probably we should, if we want charge balance, it should be really, the sodium species would need to be put charge balanced. Okay, now here, let's look through, so this essentially is a table that is giving you All the concentration of different species, right? It's log morality, log activity, and everything. Let's look at log morality is uh, concentration you get. So the first several lines are for all the um, surface species, right? And then you have H plus, sodium, then all the aqueous species here. So let's look at uh, chromium. We are looking at the chromium absorption. So it'd be interesting to see what are the dominant species. Okay. So we were given in the table. Let me just check back. In the table, you are given a total concentration of chromium 9.6 times 10 to minus 5 more per liter. All right. So here. When you look at this, it's um, H chromium O4 minus H2 chromium O4, and then chromium O4. These are in the orders, okay, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5, 10 to the minus 15. And then on the surface, we are supposed to have the surface species of this, right? But it's very, very small. It's 10 to minus 10, essentially. Very small. Um, very small numbers. So that means, what does that mean? You have this 10 to minus 10, and then you also have um, chromium. CrO4, 2 minus is 10 to minus 4, in order of 10 to minus 4, and then these are 10 to the minus 5, 10 to minus 15. So what does that mean? Do you think chromium absorbed on a solid phase or not? Now it'd be, if you think about it, right, comparing the different species, on the solid phase, that you are supposed to have this surface species, you have very low concentration of 10 minus 10, and chromium is, chromium O4 is 2 minus, so that if you compare it, you know this is essentially actually, most of chromium is still in the, in the aqueous phase, it's not absorbing much at all at this pH. This pH is, where's the pH calculation? Okay, the pH, solution pH, 
is still 8.0, so it's not really reacting much because the absorption reaction doesn't. Um, that's this. This is high pH values. All right, so um, that's so you can pull out these numbers and uh, answer the question. Get 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 a table, answer the question. Okay, what's the concentrations of different surface complexes on this and the pH value? And the second question is that pH is four point zero. So let's change the condition here. If I change this condition to four point zero, let me just change the pH to four. What happens? Sorry. Good All right, so I change it to 4.0, and let's rerun it. So what happens? Okay, I, I might have mentioned this before. When you run this, um, let's you you can delete all the output files if you want, but you can also just leave it there. Or you can build another folder if you want to to keep the um, as all the output file. But if you run it in the same folder, the new simulation would overwrite the old file, so you you will get the new file uh, with pH at four. So let's just try this. Um, I need to save this so it will actually reflect. All right, so let's run it again. Hmm. Well, let's okay because I changed the concentration. Okay, this is a solution that is relatively. Um, okay, I guess it doesn't take. You would still need to take more per kilogram. It doesn't really matter when you have relatively dilute solution like we have here. So we have more per kilogram. Uh, let's rewrite it. So it doesn't recognize more per liter. Let's do it again. Okay, so it's done. Hopefully, it's giving me. I'm just trying to update, uh, like go to our folder and then reopen. Make sure all these files are the new updated file. You can look at the time too with the estimation. It needs to be the latest time. Anyway, so you have things. So the output file should be okay. This one looks like it's still organizing. It's still not green yet. Okay, it's actually ready. Okay, so it's for we can just everything else the same. You can just go down and um, look at the last block that lists all the countries. Okay, so now it's pH four point zero. Okay, so we can look at this, the same, for example, different species for chromium. Chromium, okay, so HCrO4 is still pretty high, minus 4. And then this is H2, it's minus 9. Non chromium CrO4 is 10 to minus. So now the aqueous species dominant one is HCrO4 now, because you have much more hydrogen now. It's a more acid, much acidic uh, condition. Now here you also observe that SiOH, this surface species, before it was in the order of 10 to the minus 10. Now it's 10 to minus 4.8 essentially. So increased by about five orders of magnitude, which means you absorb much more chromium on solid um, than what you had before. 
So pH have a huge impact on how much you can absorb on solid phase. Essentially, if I do Let's see if I try pH equal to 3.0, what happens? Let's try it again. Let's close this and change this to 3.0 Okay, so it's updating Going back Let's look at the output file. Hmm. Oh, okay, it's here. Now here with with uh, H P H three, you increased more on the solid phase, right? So essentially, you would have um absorbed species this much. Um so it's in the order of ten to minus four point five. So between f so between um pH four and three they all already have a lot of different hydrogen ion in the in the in the in the uh, system. So it doesn't change much as when you change from pH eight to four. Now the reason here's why Chromium six um, with at pH um, eight point zero, the dominant species. It's it's a negative charge species, right? So um, it tend to absorb when you have when the system when the surface side have a lot of positive sides. Now at a high um, pH condition, the aqueous solution is really have a lot of H minus instead of H plus. So the eli surface tend to be negative, and because it's negative, it wouldn't attract much of the negative chromium on the solid surface. Now, when you increase um, acidity or decrease pH to three or to four, you have a lot of H plus in the system, and this H plus would go through these reactions with the surface side to form. Um, SiOH two plus, so you have, you would have a lot of positive charges on the surface. Now in that case, chromium it will be attracted to the positive charge surface. So that's why under low pH condition you can absorb more, much more chromium than um, in the situation of high pH. So now imagine, okay, this is for chromium and it's a negative charge species. What if you have, for example, cadmium, or um, zinc, or other species that uh, these cations that are positively charged, they tend to go, they tend to be attracted by negative charge surfaces, right? So think about what condition, under what condition you tend to have more um, surface compensation for these cations, the answer would be opposite to what you have here, right? So it, for example, these heavy metal cations, you tend to see more absorption under high pH conditions. All right, I think we can end now. I believe um, I talk every talk about everything I need to discuss, um, and just as a reminder. If you are not clear about what you are going to um, what you are going to do, and you want a bit more detailed information from the manual or everything, I I listed in the online materials that for species for surface compensation, there's examples on the manual crunch flow manual, uh, page six three six four and six nine. They are going through different blocks um, in in crunch. 
um, and uh, the, the we uploaded the, a set of exercises with input file and uh, and uh, documents that explain what each exercise do. So these are good resources again, good example files for you if you need something to look up. So in that exercise folder, let me just put it up so you can see it. Right, let's see. Okay, added. Hmm, where is it? Okay, in Crunchflow related. I added a Crunchflow example exercises. So in that folder, we have folders for different exercises. And in that folder, exercise 4 is for um, a surface complexation example, if you would like to, to look up. All right, let's stop here. And uh, I hope you have fun working on this and the, the rest of the homework. Let's skip this. Um, for question one, homework, which is an extension of example 3.1, you have total chromium. This, this is essentially the same. But essentially, I, I added one more surface species, which is aluminum. And with that, you will need to set up in your database with this species, like what the site density will be in the input file, and also all the reactions that are associated with um, database. You need these reactions also need to put in the begin surface complexation block to define it, uh, and then you can. Um, Around the simulation. Otherwise, so and you has, so remember you need to update database. You need to update um, the input file in order to run the whole suite of thing. All right, I will stop here and have fun.